What's up, fam? It's Calla from Recalibrate, back with episode four of the Lighten Up podcast. On today's episode, we have my dear friend and sister, Is Word, and we're going to be talking about her twin pregnancy and her birthing her babies at home by herself, like the badass that she is. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you, but before we get into it, I just want to touch on a couple of things. The first is, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you might notice that um, I did edit out a couple parts of the conversation, and I know that I've been pretty adamant that I um, plan on sharing just unfiltered, raw conversations with all of you, and that is still my intention moving forward. But due to the sensitive nature of this topic and some of the tangents that Iz and I went on in this conversation, we decided it was in our best interest to just cut some of those things out so that we could really focus on um, the potent message that we have to share without getting too distracted by some of the um, details. So thank you for your understanding with those edits. I also just want to say that as always, Nothing in this podcast or anything I ever say constitutes medical advice, legal advice, or any sort of advice. This podcast is just for entertainment purposes only, just to shed light on different topics. It's informational, but never should be construed as medical advice or legal advice or professional advice or any sort of advice. As always, please make sure that you are consulting with the proper professionals for your situation, and most importantly, always tuning in with your intuition because, as I always say and many others say, you are the doctor, doctor, you are the guru, you are the teacher, and you know what is best for you. So please know that nothing we share is ever intended to make you feel bad or shameful about the way you do things, but rather to shed light on a different perspective so that we all may be empowered in choosing um, what to do that is best for us, because when we have more information, we can make better choices. So with that being said, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to share this episode and let's grab a candle, some sage, palo santo, sacred smoke, and let's lighten up together. What's up, fam? It's Calla from Recalibrate, here to lighten up with my friend Izzy, his word. (laughs) So grab yourself a candle, maybe some ganja or some of an herbal smoke blend, perhaps the Turtle Island smoke blend, Mm. um, or, you know, some sweetgrass sage, and let's lighten up together. So we'll start by... Let's just light this candle and take a moment to just center ourselves. And we'll start with three breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth together. And on the exhale, even maybe letting out a little bit of sound. So let's breathe in through our nose and out. And again. one great spirit thank you for being here with me and Izzy and whoever is watching this I thank you always for guiding my path and guiding us all on our path and just ask that you be with us in this transmission to share with the collective what we need to know to bring more light into this world and to each and every moment and to love each other more deeply and profoundly. And um, I just ask that you show us the way. And now I want to hear Izzy sing. (laughs) Mm, Well, I'll sing the way. You don't have to know the way, the way knows the way. You don't have to.
to plan the way Trust the way Feel your way The way knows The way knows The way knows The way The way does know the way. Thank you, sister. It brought tears to my eyes. Um, I just want to also say that I didn't know you were going to sing that song. So when I said, show yeah. us the way, I, that wasn't planned. Like, I didn't know that was going to happen. And I was like, why am I saying this? That was, well, it's funny because that was the song I was going to sing. And I was like, no, I'm going to sing a different song. And then you said that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to sing that song. <laughs> That's the one. That's the way. Oh, spirit, oh, that was so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. So for mm. those of you who don't know Izzy, she is a powerhouse of a woman. <laughs> She's a twin mama, sovereign birth woman, mm. um, and a creator of many things from all sorts of artistic endeavors to beautiful medicine foods to sing and song and music you just do a multitude of things so I'd love to if you could tell yeah. the people a little bit more about yourself <laughs> sure thanks uh, yeah I was recently asked to describe myself <laughs> and the first thought was I don't know anymore <laughs> uh, I've been joking that well kind of joking but serious that the metamorphosis that I've been going through I feel like the black slime so when a caterpillar right cocoons up and it starts to dismantle and disintegrate and it's in this limbo place it's in this like it's like an enigma it's, <laughs> it's just the void and that's a necessary part right before it finds its new shape and form as butterfly so I'm kind of black slime these days but like the most sacred black slime ever <laughs> And uh, it's been really refreshing, you know, because uh, I have been identifying with certain labels oh, I feel for that. quite a while, right? And I think 2020 ushered in a massive ego death mm -hmm. for everyone. Uh, and then for me, um, birthing twins in 2020 was like double slay ego death, <laughs> yeah, you know? It's yeah. like, whoa, this is a lot. So, you know, I've identified as yoga teacher and sound healer and I'm an herbalist and I forgot so artist. many things. I'm like, you do so many things. But that's the thing, right? It's yeah. like, there are so many things. Um, I think what it's coming down to is I am a creativity alchemist. Mm. I'm an alchemist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And I got a lot of things cooking in the cauldron. So. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> So today we wanted to talk about, as you guys know, if you watched the last episode, it was with um, Rachel, the midwife. Mm. So I thought a perfect next episode would be to talk to my friend mm. Izzy, who really lived the experience of, you know, not only birthing one baby at home, but birthing two babies at home and just that whole like being pregnant with twins in 2020 and Mm. everything I just feel your story is so profound and powerful that I would love to share it and thank you for being willing to open up about something that is really sacred and personal yeah thank you yeah. Kelly <laughs> this is kind of like my first um, public speaking on it you know so I'm really honored and excited because it's a lot I gotta <laughs> say um, you don't know what tired is until you have twins <laughs> I believe it. But it's a good tired, and it's been such a wild ride. Um, so Midwife Rachel, I really encourage you to listen to that episode. I can't wait to listen yeah. to it, <laughs> because Rachel's one of my best friends, and yeah. I think she's all of our homegirl, yeah. and I've learned so much from Rachel. Um, I first met her back in 2014. Um, when I was pregnant with my first baby, and so, yeah, and we were looking for a midwife. And long story, I had someone had planted this seed um, as to where she was working at that time, and I called. And the first time I met with her, and then my other midwife, Shell, who she apprenticed with, um, 
we talked about Atlantis and Ooh. ancient Lumeria and ancient Egypt and past lives. And I was like, well, these are my midwives. Like, <laughs> I don't even care about the rest, but like, yeah. this is a soul connection, right? So yeah. my husband and I were like elated. And then since then, Rachel has been in my corner and has essentially taught me how to be my own midwife. Yes. Oh, oh that gives my face chill. <laughs> yeah. Goosebumps. It's like, woo. And then, so if we think about where we're at right now, Collectively, because I know the audience may not all be parents or mothers. It's diverse, but we have a lot to learn from midwifery and how to midwife ourselves. Yes. To be our own midwife on this planet, to rebirth ourselves. My nipples are so hard right now. (laughs) (laughs) To rebirth ourselves with the grace of the goddess, you know, and to really reclaim our birthright and our sovereignty and so you know becoming a mother has really like exponentially sent me off on that path so my first uh born is six years old now so i birthed at home with him in 2015 Uh, he was actually due due dates are very arbitrary um he was due on a full blood moon eclipse um, but thankfully he came a few days later cause it was really intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's a wild Aries boy mm. and, um, that was such an empowerment and an awakening for me. And now, um, birthing in 2020, five years later, it's, it's wild. The upgrades that have occurred, you know, in a short amount of time. Um, so I'm not even sure of the question anymore, but... <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been a trip. Um, yeah. Well, let's just start at the very beginning. Like, so you got pregnant with twins, and what what was that like? Your well, first? Were you you obviously weren't expecting it, or were you? N- well, it's weird. You know how you think you're not expecting something, but then you look back at all the clues and the synchronicities on your path, and then in hindsight, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, of course, you know. Um, but no, I never thought I would have twins. Really, I yeah. mean. I never wanted that per se. I meet people who are like, yeah, I would, I would love, love to have twins. twins yeah. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I mean, it's a blessing. It's a sacred blessing. And I knew before I got pregnant with the twins um, that something was different. Um, I had been supporting my family during a really intense healing crisis back in the Midwest. And um, my stepfather had just lost his I identical twin oh wow yep so my we're not related through blood but it's kin and um his twin um developed a brain tumor and passed away it was very heartbreaking and knowing the connection the sacred connection between twins i was concerned for him yeah and lo and behold two months later he developed a tumor in his abdomen and so i kind of went on a journey with my my folks um through a healing crisis and while I was supporting them, um, one day in the hotel, I just felt like shit. <laughs> and I was like, I can't drink that wine anymore. What's going on, you know? Yeah. And my cycle was late, and I took a test, and I was like, oh, pregnant. pregnant. You know, like, I just didn't even see that coming. But yeah. I had been through, like, a lot of uprooting in 2019. Mm. Actually, for me, 2019 was way harder than 2020. Yeah. I was already on that tip of, like, <laughs> yeah. massive change. But yeah. Um, I got pregnant, but I was like really not feeling good. Like it was harder, um, the second pregnancy. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm just having a girl. Right. People say that, you know, baby girl steals your beauty or whatever. <laughs> I've never heard thing that. to say, but <laughs> people say shit, you know? And yeah. so I just thought, oh, this is just a more intense pregnancy, you know? Yeah. Um, and so then when I got back to Arizona, um, Rachel, my midwife, my friend, um, checked me out. She gave me an ultrasound at eight weeks. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, but I had been through a miscarriage. And so I just wanted to make sure everything was like in yeah. there stable. Yeah. And we saw two, two little things on the picture. One was a little bit bigger than the other. And I was like, well, what's that? <laughs> you know? And she's like, Ooh, I don't know. That could be twins, but it might not be like, yeah, we don't know yet. It's so early. So I was like, oh. I went down the rabbit hole y'all. Like, I suddenly was meeting people who had twins, saw twin strollers at the Goodwill. You know, I was like, I'm having twins. I knew it. 
So then fast forward 14 weeks pregnant, we did another scan um, because I needed to know. Like my mind was just like, I just need to know. And we only got one baby, one heartbeat. Hmm. And so I was like, wow, my intuition is like really off. Yeah. And I pride myself on my intuition (laughs) and I'm usually pretty on. Yeah. So I just thought, okay, well, I don't know shit, you know? I was like, I guess I'm not. And the thing about <laughs> twins is that they're little tricky, little Hayoka <laughs> tricksters. And at, uh, let's see, 20 weeks. And it's funny because I got one ultrasound with Enzo at eight weeks and that's it. Yeah. I don't even really, I'm not even invested in ultrasounds, but no judgment. It's, it is what it is. Like you have to do what you want to do, what works for you. I felt like I should get another one at yeah. 20 weeks. And we're in the office, and the whole family's there, my husband, my son, and they're like, did they tell you anything special? I'm like, what? No. Like, what do you mean? And the way she said special, I thought, is my baby special needs? Yeah. Like, I, like, that's where my mind went. Right. I was like, oh, what? what's going on, you know? My heart sank. And then she's like, oh, there's two in here. <laughs> and I was like what like it felt like a cosmic joke yeah i just started laughing my ass off because you had just harmonized with the fact that you were wrong yes and (laughs) then they're like nah bitch you're right (laughs) there are two of us in here my husband about passed out you know he was just like oh my gosh yeah so it was a funny runaround like and that's how twins are like let me tell you it's just like boom ba boom ba boom so my twins are fraternal mm-hmm. i have um, a boy and a girl so i don't know how it is with identical twins i feel like that's probably its own different energetic signature mm-hmm. but with the fraternal twins um i feel polarity really strong you know the contrast mm-hmm. is really strong yeah. so i felt that in my pregnancy <laughs> of like yes no i think i'm right no i'm wrong you know <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. So it was pretty pretty interesting, but then I just, I was like, oh, it all makes sense. Like, yeah. that's why I was so sick in the beginning. That's why I'm so huge so yeah. fast, you know? Oh, girl, I'll <laughs> never remember when I showed up to park yoga and I saw you, I was like, you're beautiful. And you were like, you're beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. But, like, you were glowing. But you also, like, you're never supposed to tell a pregnant woman they're huge or whatever. But, like, I was like, damn, how does she do that? Like, you were doing yeah. yoga. I know. I felt pretty badass. Honestly, you were so in badass. My twin pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. I was doing way more yoga than I am now, physically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but that carried me through. You yeah. know what I mean? Like doing yoga out in the Arizona heat in the summer up until I was like 36 weeks pregnant was such good medicine for me. Yeah. Like it gave me this like like I can do this yeah. you know what I mean like I am strong I got this yeah, yeah. you do <laughs> and you did yeah so I know there's like a, I don't know if you want to oh yeah this is a um an herbal smoke blend with um all sorts of stuff in it from Turtle Island smoke blends it's amazing um yeah, I'm just really doing a little delicious. plug for Lisa Marie and Christian <laughs> yeah it's really delicious and their medicines are so uh, intentionally crafted and yes. um, really beautiful. Blessed. Healing. We pray over the, thank yes, thank you, medicine. We pray over it and um, I digress, but uh, it's a beautiful blend. <laughs> it's really beautiful. <laughs> and so I want to talk a little bit about, um, I know you had like a pretty unique uh, experience like right before you were about to birth the twins if there's anything I'm missing before that that you want to get to well yeah there's I mean there's a lot and I want to try to condense the story down but you know like we all know where the state of the world has been so just being pregnant with twins during a pandemic uh was fun (laughs) (laughs) and just you know I'm a very naturalist person uh, as much as I can be and you know being pregnant with twins if you align with the allopathic conventional route they label you high risk Mm -hmm. essentially problematic like you're a walking pathology yeah okay and i'm 37 years old and so i'm geriatric (laughs) (laughs) i'm an old woman (laughs) birthing twins (laughs) seriously so with all of that and then during the rona it's like 
the hospital is the last fucking place I want to go to, okay? Like, they will label me and compartmentalize me and monitor me and test me. And it's basically that signature of allopathic medical system, like, over intervening. Mm -hmm. And Mm so, you know, my story is not to judge anyone else's. I'm just putting this out there, right? This is just my truth and where I'm at. Um, you got to do what's right for you. But what's right for me is to not engage in that system at all unless I have to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I appreciate it for what it is. Right, and there are times, of course, where, like, it serves a purpose and a yes. role, obviously. But that's the whole point of, like, this podcast and my message, and I think your message, too, is everyone has to do what's best for them. Right. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? But it's empowering to hear... You know, like for someone else who may be going through this or whatever you're going through, it's just empowering to hear someone else's story and watch them step into their power because then you can do that and it like gives you permission in a sense to do that in your own way. And you did it Mm -hmm. in such a profound way because like you said, to birth twins at home, like you're, it's like you already to birth at home have to go like get rid of all your conditioning about birth being scary and all you know your mom's birth story if that was traumatic you have to clear all of that but then you know which i'm sure you did with enzo you cleared a lot of that and then now you're like oh there's another layer yeah to break through really rooting into that yeah Yeah, for sure it's a great way to put it It's, it's an evolution you know and that's what we're doing we're unlearning we're learning anew and um i did unravel a lot of programs in this pregnancy not so much like that should I home birth or not I knew that I was going to be home I didn't quite know what that would look like just yet but for me it took me deeper into unraveling programs within my own ego identity Mm -hmm. and like this concept of like showing up to be of service and stretching me beyond my perceived limits you literally know? literally <laughs> uh, there's just so much to the story but like flashback to um the winter solstice prior to this um we were setting some intentions in a, a little group ceremony and watch your words because they're spells okay <laughs> i knew i was pregnant but i didn't know i was having twins yet and i said to spirit Please stretch me like a drum so I can be an instrument for spirit song. (laughs) I love that. That's so adorable. And it's really great. And I got stretched major. (laughs) So, you know, it's it's a blessing and it's beautiful. Um, But it stretched me to, like, challenge the status quo, Mm -hmm. basically. And fun fact about Arizona is that it's technically illegal for you to birth twins at home with a licensed midwife. Yeah. <sighs> like, just <laughs> that. I'm like, you don't get to tell me what to do. You know, yeah. you don't get to tell my midwife what to do. But the the ca- caveat to that is that you can birth twins at home by yourself. Yeah, that's You fine. could birth twins at yeah. Target by yourself. But, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it'd be weird. Right. But, like... You know, it's it's this weird, um, like, disempowering of women because you can't seek professional help in your sovereignty. Right. It's like a weird double-edged sword because in one sense, you could take the risk and be empowered to do it on your own however you want and see fit. Or they could use it against you to force you into an institution to birth. Mm-hmm. And I chose the latter. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm birthing at home. So yeah. I had to do some rearranging with logistics. Yeah about midwifery support right. but at the end of the day it worked out where i had a, a goddess coven a mother coven right and i had um a couple women who were there in a more um expertise supportive role like in case anything were to happen and then i had my my crew of women who were there to just serve me right you know because i considered um free birthing birthing on my own right. I went through all of this and what it came down to for me was that I wanted support yeah because with my home birth with Enso it was just me my husband and my midwives and it was beautiful it was a warrior birth it was hard it was amazing and all went well but it like it challenged me on such a deep level I was very humbled by it mm-hmm. and at that point in my life I wasn't as open to receive mm in that feminine way Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, I have to do it myself, you know, and I got this shit. And it's yeah. like, I do got this shit. Like, I'm strong. Yeah. But this time, I want the feminine to be present with right. me. I want to feel the love and support and connection of other mothers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that was my curated intention. So it worked out great, you know. But during during the pandemic, it's like I had to weigh out all the options. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, the COVID actually really helped me. Dare I say it? <laughs> it helped me solidify my decision yeah. to stay out of the institution and yeah. stay home. Yeah. And that was the best place I could be. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't... Yeah. It was it's beautiful. It's like in the middle of... Like, I feel like under normal circumstances, your mind would be more willing to entertain... Right. The hospital, especially given the twins and such, but perhaps I mean, I get yeah, yeah, totally. I feel like that would be a factor, but I know myself, and I would not. I would not. Yeah. I just no. I don't even want to go to urgent care. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not trying to go there to bring new life onto this planet. Yeah. So you know, it's it's been a really interesting journey, and um, I feel like I participated in multiple. Um, ceremonies and activities during my prenatal experience that are probably controversial Mm -hmm. and I don't even know how much I'll speak to that yeah but I communed with um, various earth medicines that sort of like wove a golden thread through my pregnancy I felt and it kept me on this really magical path and so when I was at the end of my pregnancy um, the babies were born on July 20th so in Arizona, it's really hot, you know, and really the only time that it felt good for me as a twin pregnant mama to go out and enjoy nature was at two in the morning, <laughs> you know. So um, Lisa Marie, um, Turtle Island prayer blend maker and bestie, um, she and I went down to the Salt River and I was 39 weeks pregnant and it was a Saturday night and we went down there at like midnight or something and we sat with a little medicine and we were on the the sandy shore and we were laid back and the clouds were beautiful it was a really magical night and we just had a a great time and we were releasing fears and calling in support and just like reveling in where we were both at in our lives and i knew that this was probably my last outing you know (laughs) because another thing in the twin pregnancy world is that they want to cut the babies out of you by 37 weeks. Oh, whoa. Like, usually the the story is that twins are are born at least, or at the latest, by 37 weeks. They say that's full-term pregnancy for twins. Mm -hmm. And I went to 39 weeks in a few days. Mm -hmm. Um, So I knew that I was getting close. You know what I mean? (laughs) And um, it was a cancer new moon. And it's Which a, it is today. It's a Cancer New Moon right now. <laughs> it's really amazing. It's actually come like totally full circle in the lunar calendar. Ooh, this one. I know. It's really amazing. And, it, you know, Cancer is cardinal water. So it's rivers, oceans, waterfalls. It's moving, fluctuating, powerful, emotional mm-hmm. energy, right? And... I didn't know if my twins were going to be Cancers or Leo, you know, like they were right on the cusp. Um, But I could feel that the power of the mother and the Cancer energy in me and being at the river, it was like really perfect. So we're like hanging out and it's beautiful. And then I don't even know how to explain this part, but we had a really bizarre, phenomenal experience at the river where we were just chilling and it was probably like three in the morning at this point. And I was in the middle of like a full on cry, like... like giving to the mother like just surrendering and suddenly there's like this creepy bizarro thrashing and groaning in the river like like i I can't even do it it was like what the like all your hair stand on end and you're just like okay like what's going on here you know and i was really trying to just trust you know because it's like that's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stress. And it continues. And it's thrashing. It's almost like a struggling in the water. It feels like, honestly, I, I don't know. We still don't know to this day what it was. It could have been an otter. It could have been a swamp monster. 
but it sounded like it emerged from the depths of the water and it was like not even a human nor an animal sound it was very strange and the thrashing continued and it started to get closer and closer and it's a new moon so it's a dark moon it's Mm. dark right Mm. we don't have Mm. the lunar uh light coming down upon us and i didn't even think to get my phone out and use the flashlight i was just kind of like i just want to sit with this you know yeah and it felt like it was coming towards us and lisa marie and i were both just like i don't know like maybe we should go (laughs) like i think our our welcome has been complete you know because it is like three in the morning on a saturday night and like i'm hella pregnant and there's nobody else around it was weird because we didn't hear any movement towards us no footsteps no swimming we hadn't encountered anything or anybody else Mm -hmm. for hours Mm -hmm. so this sound just like emerged Mm -hmm. and it was a little off-putting and i still won't ever know what that is probably but we hightailed it out of there and so we're just like whoa what was that like we're driving down bush highway that the river runs along Mm -hmm. and we're just like why did we have to leave so suddenly that was crazy and meanwhile my womb starts cramping and i'm like oh i'm having some feelings and some sensations you know and we're like, okay, we, we need to, like, ground down. We need to find a spot before we just hightail at home. We need to process this yeah. and just, like, sit and breathe and maybe pee, you know? Yeah. And so we try to find a river spot, and finally we just pull off the side of the road, and it's quiet. It's, like, 3.30 in the morning, and we, we take a pee, and we're just like, whoa, like, what was that? That was weird, you know? The timing of it was so weird. Yeah. So then we're standing outside the car, and... When we were at the river, um, I had been watching the star in the sky that was hovering real low, like right over the canyon wall, and it was very bright. And I just kept staring at it, and, you know, I just noticed it. And then when we pulled off later and we took a pee and we were, like, figuring the situation out, we're standing there, and I look, and I'm like, hey, Lise, there's that star, but it's, like, moving. And... She's like, what? And we look at it, and it starts, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I was like, wait a minute. And, like, <laughs> we look at each other, and we just have tears pouring down our face. And we're just like, I don't, I don't think that's a star. Like, <laughs> that was crazy. So we're looking at each other, and we're talking, and we look back, and it's gone. And this is, like, the brightest star in the sky at this point. And I was just like, whoa, I don't know. I've been watching X-Files my whole pregnancy. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. (laughs) But no, it comes back. And it's like, and like it shows itself to us. It wasn't like, oh, that's a satellite or a plane. No, 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 no. I've done enough stargazing to know. Yeah. That was an unidentified object in the sky (laughs) and it was pulsing and getting brighter fading in and out and then it left again and we're just like entranced by this and meanwhile my womb was like "Mm, mm," like hot and just activated now and I'm just like whoa what's happening so like one more time it shows itself and it starts like pulsing And I swear, it, like, looks like it's getting closer and closer. And it wasn't like it flew right at us. Yeah. But it was, it was moving Mm -hmm. towards us. And she and I both were like, wow, we believe in aliens. They're among us, you know? (laughs) Like, is this even a question anymore? (laughs) Um, UFOs are real, you know? Like, we're all in for this. But do we really want to stick around and find out? Right. Like, I'm pregnant, and I think I'm going into early labor, so we're just going to go. Yeah. So we decide it's the best choice to get in the car and drive home. Well, as we're driving, I get this weird headache, and I'm like, oh, like, I feel like almost like hungover, and it felt like my mind was sort of like drained, and all my energy was in my womb, and Lisa was like, I have the same feeling. And it almost felt like this object in the sky, like, mined our thoughts or, like, Mm. penetrated our energetic body in a way that it was a visceral sensation. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't negative. It wasn't, um, like, ill feeling at all. It was just palpable. Mm -hmm. And so we went home, like, stupefied and just amazed. And then... I continued to have early labor cramps the next day. 
I slept one more night and then I woke up on Monday morning and I was trying to make juice and I was turning the juicer off to have a surge <laughs> and my husband Chippewa was like I think you're in labor like, just go lay down <laughs> and I was like I think you're right I am in labor and then like four hours of active labor later the babies came <laughs> so it was like really four hours yeah I had like the early morning right, right. cramps but then no, once it started, it was like, oh, it's on like Donkey Kong and yeah. it's happening. Yeah. So it was it was a whirlwind of a weekend. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds amazing. I feel like my babies are from deep, deep space. They are from a deep star seed um, situation. I don't even know where yet. I'm trying to tune into that because they're kind of mysterious to me. They feel ancient and mm. I feel like maybe <laughs> this is probably crazy but some being in the sky decided to beam down and check in and be like boop now's the time like yeah. it was an activation yeah and i know you hadn't been feeling though that no 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 like the cramping started at the river and it was weird because whatever that thing was at the river i toiled over this for a long time and i realized if nothing else it was it was a message to leave mm -hmm. it was like okay you've had your time here and it was like um, a catalyst for us to see and have that experience with mm -hmm. that that light being, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Because because you left in that fashion too, you stopped and had another moment with the thing, you know, which... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was all divinely orchestrated, whatever it was. From the jump, the, you know, the yeah. minute you decided to go or everything, really, everything all leads you to this moment. Yeah, but. it was a spontaneous journey out to the river too, of course, you know, yeah. and... Lisa Marie and I have always gone out for like middle of the night hikes and dips and things. So yeah. I was like, oh, I have one last hurrah, you know? Yeah. I just did not expect that. Yeah. Um, but it was beautiful. And I just, I can't help but um, know that my, my star seeds are divinely orchestrated to do powerful work here. And if nothing else, to slay my ego. Yeah. And really shine a bright light. On the shadowy areas areas in myself yeah you know because serving twins birthing twins it's it's a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean yeah tell us a little bit about that like I don't know whatever you feel comfortable sharing about the birth yeah well the birth was amazing and honestly it was very straightforward <laughs> it was like I birthed two babies like um, both of the babies were head down and so that ensures a really nice smooth passage yeah. most of the time you know <laughs> birth is complex and there can be all kinds of different presentations with positioning and whatnot but yeah. I did a lot of work in my pregnancy with my yoga practice and my visualizations to encourage the babies to be in the best birthing position yeah. possible so I feel like that paid off I did a lot of headstands and things um, <laughs> to get them to turn you yeah. know but yeah it was it was intense, but it was easier than my first birth. Mm. It was. Um, pushing is always the hardest, or when the baby crowns and emerges, is the hardest for me. Because, yeah. you know, you can play this out metaphorically, too, in your life. Even if you've never birthed babies in this lifetime, um, when you're in the womb, you're in the dark, cozy, held space. Like, it's just, that's the beginning, right? Like, oh, I'm so safe. I'm loved. And then suddenly, like, things start to change, and it gets uncomfortable, and you need to descend through the birth canal, right? And that's what we've been doing, mm -hmm. right? Like, collectively. collectively yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were, like, getting pushed through the birth canal, you know, um, this past year. And there's a thing in um, birth they call transition. Mm. So it's when you have labored actively until you have dilated fully, mm -hmm. 10 centimeters. And then there's a transition between, okay, I'm like, I'm done opening mm -hmm. and a facing, and now I need to allow the descent, mm -hmm. you know? And it's usually in the transition, and I've seen this firsthand attending um, a birth where you lose it. Transition can be, for some people, really hard. A mm -hmm. lot of people, not everybody, but yeah. it's where you're like, fuck, I can't do this. Or like, this hurts. I don't know what's happening. I, I just want to quit. Like, yeah. let's just call it off, you know? And it's like, mm, no, that's your mind trying to figure it out. But your body, your sacred yoni portal is 
what's needing to do the work, right? Mm -hmm. And the baby paving the way. So that was a little bit hard for me, and I had some great support just to navigate that, like Mm -hmm. more so in my mood, you know, because the labor was pretty pretty smooth. I actually threw threw up multiple times. Um, It was really intense, um, but it felt good. It's like a purging too. And then when it came time for that, it was like, you have to send everything down. Mm. And it's just like when you're getting grounded for your yoga practice or you're getting centered or you're doing big work, you need to ground down into your body. And it can be scary because birth also brings up traumas, abuse, shadow, I mean, Rachel all of it. I talked a lot about that, about how oh. it's like opening, but if it, if you're not, if you have trauma there, like it hits that spot where like, you, you know. Oh yeah, and your body wants to <clears throat> yeah. tighten. And that's what can happen um, and cause problems like stalling, yeah. tearing. I actually did tear. Um, I had torn with my first before, and that's a whole other discussion I won't get into, but <laughs> um, that's healing, it's yeah. fine. Um, but we have to really let go. And they say, you know, like your jaw fits in your pelvis and there is um, a visual um, similarity between your vocal cords and the cervix. Mm. And so the anatomy of the jaw and the throat and the vocal cords um, kind of matches or harmonizes with the pelvic anatomy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ah, uh, you know, like you hear women like just making like, uh, like yeah. deep cathartic releasing sounds or yeah. it's just to like get everything to go down. Mm. So that was probably my biggest challenge at first, but I, I navigated it. And, um, I got to say, birthing a baby is, it feels so good. <laughs> That's what Rachel said. She's like, <laughs> your body creates like the most, like, like your body creates all of this, like all of the pain that gets that through. And she's like, but then you have like the counterpart of like the same amount of intensity of like beauty. And yes. she's like, it's the most intense drug trip of your life, girl. <laughs> like, it is. I mean, I remember in my first pregnancy with Enzo, I was quoting Salvador Dali a lot. <laughs> I don't do drugs. I am drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are drugs. Yeah. And it is a trip. Like to birth human life, you literally open so wide. Your heart, your womb, everything just opens and releases to allow something beautiful to be born. And it is the best release ever. I didn't have an orgasmic birth. I was kind of hoping I would. Like I was <laughs> like, yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, some women do. Yeah. Um, But it felt good. It was just like, oh my gosh, when baby girl came out, it was just like, oh, like, wow. You know, this is like almost 10 months of building and building and building to have like the biggest release of your life. Yeah, times two. Times two. Well, so then baby girl, she paved the way and it was all great and she was beautiful. Everything was going well. They did check the heart tones on, on baby boy and his heart rate dropped. Um, suddenly I think he was kind of like where's my homie like yeah. my sis is gone I need her yeah. um, because she was always settled down on the left lower part of my womb and he was kind of up high on the right interesting that they were even like on the masculine feminine side totally yeah I know it's so beautiful <laughs> and um, I think he could have stayed in longer because <laughs> I actually conceived the twins about probably a week or ten days apart <gasps> That's our theory, and I'm pretty sure, because on that first scan, there was a little little bit bigger. So my body released two eggs at two different times, and they were both fertilized. And Which I've heard, I just recently learned that was even possible. Like, I didn't know that was possible, that you could get pregnant while you're pregnant. I didn't know either. I mean, (laughs) I I should have known, but like, that didn't even cross my mind. I didn't know my body could do such amazing things. Yeah. So... Yeah, he um, he weighed about a pound and a half less than she did. Oh, wow. um, so I think he could have stayed in. He's a mama's boy, too. <laughs> he could have stayed in for another couple weeks, you know. <laughs> but it was like, okay, it's time, you know. Like, yeah. we got to come together. <laughs> and so six minutes later, he arrived. And I really didn't have to do anything to get him out. He just stuffed right on out. <laughs> Because he was smaller, you yeah, know. Yeah. And she had already paved the way. Yeah. She already paved the way. You know, yeah. you're already opened. Um, and yeah. it was great. I mean, it was it was wild. And then the placenta um, birthed also very easily and simply, which was great. And we discovered that their two placentas had fused into one heart-shaped placenta. Oh. I know. 
<laughs> so sweet. It was the most beautiful placenta I've ever seen. And I've processed quite a few placentas for mamas. Yeah. I'm a little biased. But, you know. Oh, you, you do everything. I know. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's beautiful. The jewel of all trades. I know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, I mean, it was pretty magical. And, like. We drank tea and ate lovely food and had fresh flowers and the women like took care of me and changed the bedding for me and it was, it was just magical. Like, so they were born in like the afternoon? Evening. Evening. Yep. Um, gosh, what time was like 7.46 or 7.45 and 7.51. Yeah. Wow. And then we have all this beauty and then it's like. Now you get to raise them. Yeah, that's the, like that's the real hard part. Like, yeah. A lot of women don't enjoy being pregnant um, because it's so taxing. You know, it's like literally your body's just like pouring out to create this new life. Mm-hmm. I loved being pregnant for the most part. Twin pregnancy definitely brings some challenges for comfort. Right. Um, but I'm pretty good about self care, and I focused intensely on my nutrition and my herbal intake and my mm-hmm. vitamin D and orgasms and getting in water and just all of the things that you need um, to just create like a beautiful, sacred, happy environment mm-hmm. to bring new life in. Yeah. And then when they're out, then it's like, okay, now you're on, <laughs> you know. And so tandem nursing on demand um, has been really beautiful. It's it's challenging at times, but for the most part, it's been really smooth. Yeah. But I had already had a breastfeeding relationship with my firstborn for a couple years, and yeah. I already knew how to do it, you know, so that helped. But, right. you know, it's its own. Postpartum is like part two. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Like, yeah, like we can't even get in. We've already been on for a while, but it's yeah. all been so insightful and just I love hearing your story and hearing you talk about everything and like the way you bring it all together like it's it's just beautiful yeah yeah Yeah. and you know and I encourage like all of the listeners too to like reflect on a few things so maybe this is some takeaways some homework um do you know your own birth story Mm. if you are able to access that information um find out yeah. Ask your mother if you are able um, to tell you the story right. or your caregivers, whoever's holding that information for you. Find out your own birth story and reflect upon that mm-hmm. because it's not right or wrong. If you're born, I was born cesarean in a hospital. It's not like, oh, if you're born in a hospital, then that's less than or something. Right. Um, that's just what we've co-created and we've come here to, to do that work, yeah. you know. Um, but... Knowing where we're at in our collective shifting, it is very wise of us to tune into the birth stories and the death stories. Mm. And you know about the death, too, because <laughs> your mama works in that world. And you're a Scorpio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the birth and death work is important. So, like, how did I come into this realm? Same right? portal. It's the same portal. DMT is released both at birth and death. We come in alone. We go out alone. The way that our patriarchal control system has monopolized birth and death is literally killing us and yeah. the planet. Yeah. It's not our only problem, but it's a major one. If we recalibrate, ah, <laughs> we recalibrate the way that we approach birth and the way that we approach death, then we will shift the collective karma on the planet. Mm-hmm. So reflecting upon your own birth story and what can you learn from that? And there might be some hidden traumas, triggers, wounding, needs, Mm -hmm. um, something in there that you might want to ponder and do some work around Mm -hmm. or celebrate Mm -hmm. and or celebrate, Mm -hmm. right? Because all new life coming is a celebration, you know, so celebrating your own birth. And if you are, if you've already birthed babies or you are looking to in this life, then you can really root down and ask yourself, like, how do I want that to look and feel for me? Mm. Because there is no prescribed way to do it. Right. I recommend um, Bauhaus Wife, oh. Alonda Norris Clark. Yeah. Put me on your podcast. No, <laughs> she's no, famous. Really. <laughs> no, really, though. No, but really. Um, she's amazing. She's very outspoken, very well read, very articulate, oh. and amazing. powerful. Mm-hmm. 
And she's a wonderful person to look to for inspiration about reclaiming sovereignty. And she does a lot of work with free birthing. I didn't really free birth under her terminology, um, but I did have a sovereign birth. Right. And so free birth would, I think my understanding is like you are the birther, like you're the midwife. You're, you are just birthing by yourself. Well, and she talks about this, how the languaging is interesting and it will change depending on who's talking about it. Right. Her, I think her perspective on free birthing is that, yes, there's nobody else who is intervening or supporting or altering the experience for you. You might have family, friends, but like no midwife, no, nobody hired right. to like oversee you. And I did have some supervision, right. um, but it was very loose. Right. You know what I mean? It was you like... You really had friends. I had good friends good who friends, were there yeah. who did have some knowledge in case I needed it. Right. Um, so I didn't have like a total free birth, but I felt very free in my birth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's really great if you are looking for a voice that is speaking out against the status quo right now mm -hmm. and enlightening people about birth. She's wonderful. Um, so reflect on your own birth story and if you want to birth, how you might want to envision that mm -hmm. to happen, you know? Because this is how, one of the ways that we can reclaim our power and our sovereignty is doing the work to check in and feel and make the be best choices for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Funny, on the drive here, there must be a Planned Parenthood or, yeah, there is. or something yeah. on the way. And there were people out protesting with their signs and their grotesque images yeah. that they're murdering babies inside. And I'm just like, well, that's interesting. I'm going to record a podcast about the birth, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's my opinion, it's not up to other people to decide for you what you should do. Never. I mean, that's sovereignty. Yeah. So the challenge is, too, to appreciate it for other people, right? Because sometimes we can get judgy and it's like, well, you right. should do that or blah, blah, blah. But it's like if you feel aligned in your own self, mm -hmm. then you're on the right path. Right. And that's why I sang that song, and that's why you prompted me to sing it in your <laughs> prayer, is because you don't have to know the way, the way knows the way. Yeah. It's true. And sovereignty or freedom isn't do it my way. Right. That's <laughs> self-righteous, yeah. like dogma. No. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Like, it's really, if we're going to be empowered to make our own decisions, we have to let other people make theirs. And, you know, for some of you, that may be birthing in a hospital, and that's... yeah. That's your path and that's beautiful, you know, but we're just here to show that like, um, there's other ways to do it, mm -hmm. to empower you so that if you do make that decision to birth in a hospital, you're doing it from an empowered place that is truly aligned with your truth and not because of fear or what right. someone else is telling you. That's the key. You know, it's like, do you feel safe? Do you feel educated? Do you feel empowered right. and supported? Are you advocating for your rights and yourself? Right. That's what matters most. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that if you sign up for the hospital setting, you have to work harder to advocate for yourself yeah. because their procedures often cause unnecessary harm. Right. And there are times and places for that intervention. Right. But we have to come into it, like you said, with a real whole body yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. You know? And so if it's a real educated, empowered, whole body, heartfelt yes, then you do you. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to plug one more person. Um, the Sacred Birth Doula on Instagram has a... I haven't birthed, <laughs> probably obviously to most of you, but... Um, so I don't know the package that she sells. I can't speak for it personally, but based on, you know, what she shares, she does have like a, um, like a, a rights package that you can purchase online if you yeah. are going to birth in a hospital that, um, basically helps you advocate for yourself in terms of like, mm -hmm. if you don't want certain shots or eye wipes or, you know, all those things. Right. So there are resources out there for... Yeah, she's Whatever. wonderful. I love her. And I think she's also the one that created, like, questions to ask your midwife. Mm. You know, so it's like when you are birthing and you want to have a support team, you interview them. Yeah, you're hiring them. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's a doctor. Right. Like, in a hospital, you are the customer. And mothering... So it's beautiful on this Cancer New Moon because, like, this mother energy is so powerful and big. Um when you become mother, you are the center. Mm. You are the nucleus. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't take that role for real, 
Mm -hmm. then you will let people walk all over you. Yeah. And you will perpetuate stories of victimhood and martyrdom and all of those things. And sometimes we need those experiences unconsciously to learn and work out our karma and heal our wounds. I get it. It's not Mm -hmm. like I have some fucking perfect path here. Okay. Yeah. It's challenging. But like when we recognize our self worth and we walk into that situation and we say, you know, these are the things that I need and that I need to know and you need to respect me. Uh Like that's going to set you up for success Yeah. because you know, doctors like they're educated, but they're educated in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, it's beautiful. And I just encourage everyone to, bring that sense of like motherhood and empowerment into the way that you nurture and mother yourself yeah. and those around you and repairing your inner child yeah. and step into that really powerful um, true knowing yeah. of goddess energy yeah 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 we can we talk about come from the goddess Ooh. and to her we shall yeah. return like a drop of rain flow into the ocean oh my I god i fucking it. love you oh, I love we could too. talk for hours i know you're gonna have to come back we'll do yeah. episode two but thank you for having me yeah i would love i've laid out all these cards yeah. i would love if you could give a um a little reading for Ooh. well this one is beyond lumeria by izzy i i know <laughs> i when i saw that deck i went to bookman's and i was like i need a book on lumeria and yes. i went there and that was the only thing they had and i saw izzy and That's i was like okay so i love it well can i pull one from here? i would love if you pulled okay. one from there do you want to pull one too or you want me to i just want do you it? to do it okay yeah okay. i think it's fun to you know see mm-hmm. other people's medicine and messages and oh, yeah shine your light is the bottom card oh beautiful four 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 these are really beautiful cards yeah mm. <sighs> join me in a long deep breath holding it in at the top And sighing it out. (sighs) Oh, I think it's just right off the bat. Here we go. Oh! Transformation. Transformation. I love it. I love it. Do you um, ever show them the card? I mean, we can do a little... If you're watching. If you're watching, here's what the transformation card looks like. Oh, I probably touched my microphone. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I probably got the book right there. Do um, you usually read the whole thing? Um, it's not too you long. can read whatever you feel it's inspired. Yeah. All right. Well, the key words for this card are self nurturing, oh. going within, time alone, being present with your feelings, cocooning before the butterfly. People, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Being gentle on yourself, angelic embrace. Oh. I am. I have goose. I have wow. goose like this whole time. I mean, literally before the butterfly, I said that. In she the said that. Come She's on. black goo. She's the sacred black goo. Wow, sacred black goo. <laughs> um, well, the uh, divinatory meaning is that you need to feel whatever you need to feel. Mm. It may be hard to be present with some parts of yourself. Bring them into a cocoon of gentle self-love and reflection and insight will come. Mm. The shadows can be released and your heart space will soften. (laughs) Cry or be angry if this is what you are holding on to and laugh at the hilarious, ironic, divine perfection of it all. Mm. This card beckons you beyond your constructed outer self where you can delve into the beautiful abyss of your being. Revel in the twilight before the dawn and let your wings unfurl. Wow, I love it. I gotta give I you know, a I hug. Was thinking <laughs> the same thing. Oh, Thank I you. love you so much. Wow, that is some serious high magic right there. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Yay! Oh, so beautiful. Wow. Well, thank you, Izzy, mm, thank and thank you, you people. This was so fun. I learned so much, and I just could listen Kelly. to you talk all day. Oh. So. 
Thank, Thank you, you for giving me a space to share my story, and I hope it's inspiring to your listeners. And, and your listeners, I'm sure we'll have some people yeah. that come out to listen to it's you. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So thank you all, and thank you. Thank and you. We'll catch you next time, mm. fam. Mwah. Stay weird. <laughs> <laughs>